We often hear how important why is, especially in network marketing, and that once we have that, the how will follow. So how important is it really to your network marketing success that you have a strong, powerful why? How do you find yours? And what happens if you lose it like I did? That's what we're covering in today's experience. Hello, 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 Wealth Warrior. I am so happy you're here, and boy, do I have a lot to share. I'm Jackie Almer, and this is the Street Smart Wealth Experience. I help network marketers, coaches, and mentors make money without annoying their family, friends, or strangers, and build a thriving social selling business. We do all this together in the Street Smart Wealth Academy. You can learn more at streetsmartwealthacademy.com. I'd love to work with you there. We kick hustle and grind to the curb and we build a better strategy and way of authentically showing up and selling, sponsoring and building a brand and tribe on social media. We have the skills to pay the bills. What a week it has been. So much good stuff is going on. I can't wait to share it with you. Yesterday, I kicked off my new webinar series, First Date Magic for Network Marketers, How to Build a Thriving Social Selling Business Without Annoying family, friends, or strangers, catching a theme there. And can you even believe that firstdatemagic.com was still available, that some dating guru didn't pick it up to build a site and a program on? So I could not believe it. But yes, you can access this free training guide by just going to firstdatemagic.com, firstdatemagic.com. It is exactly what you need to score and win the game right now in your business because successfully courting and dating your network marketing prospects is very, very important to your success. And I'm going to share with you exactly how to do that in five simple steps. We also had a new moon on Tuesday. Did you set intentions? I did. And I drew out of my daily thought download draw a jar. I drew out of it. Why is it so easy for me? to attract clients. Oh, I thought that was so perfect. I could hardly stand it. I journaled and I created a great space to manifest all my intentions for the year. And I am on fire. Can you hear it? I am on target to hit my goals and I want to bring you along on the journey. Are you game? Are you coming with me? And then finally, I submitted my first uh, few episodes to be a teacher on the Insight Timer app. And I am over the moon excited about it. I'll let you know when I'm officially on the platform, on the app. Do you have it? Do you use it? Just go to insighttimer.com, honestly, online, and you can find it in the app store. It's Insight Timer. It is fabulous. So I'm just so darn excited about this year. And I got to tell you, I keep saying that. Are you? I hope you are. So on today's show, let's get really serious about the power and why and all that matters with it, what to do when you lose your why, as I did a few years back, and how I finally rediscovered it. This is an audio program that I did for my coaching clients, and I thought it might be timely for you too. So listen in and then let me know your thoughts. Hey, Wealth Warriors, happy Wednesday. Jackie Elmer here with our weekly live coaching call for the Street Smart Wealth Academy. And today we are covering one of my absolute favorite topics, which is why. Now, Simon Sinek likes to say in his book, start with why, that it's the most important thing. And so what I want to cover today is how important is why? Does it really matter? Um, how do we find it? And then what do we do with it? And so really to do that, I thought it might be beneficial for me to share a little bit of my story, my journey into discovering my why, uh, how I discovered it, what I did with that, when I lost my why, how I got it back and kind of where I am today. So it's kind of funny when I started my network marketing journey, maybe much like you, I was um, asked by my upline or told in my training to write my why, you know, what's, what's your why? That's what I was told. Um, and so I started to do that, but the reality of it is I was very confused about, uh, what that really meant. What's my why? Well, I don't know. When I started my network marketing business, I just wanted to make a lot of money. I wanted to create lifestyle freedom. I wanted to create time freedom. Um, I wanted to stop having to look at the 
cost of everything. And most of all, I wanted to make sure that I could stay home full time with my children. That was absolutely my top, my number one goal. So that's what I set out to achieve. So I ultimately, after spending a lot of time trying to come up with some big dramatic why, I realized that that was really at the point was my number one driving goal was to be home full time with my children. I did not want them to have to go to daycare. I did not want um, to go back to work in a cubicle. I didn't want any of that type stuff. So that really was it. Um, That and the fabulous lifestyle. I had come from a background in airline sales and marketing. And even though I'm married to an airline pilot who makes a good income, it's still very difficult to make it on one salary. And once mine went away, the all the fun perks and bonuses and, you know, flying around in first class and staying in first class hotels, all that costs money. And even though our flight benefits were there, you know, the rest of it costs money. So to be able to do that really having that extra income was important. And this was especially back when airlines had what were called B scales and a lot of different things. I'm not going to bore we bore you with all those details. My guess is you can probably relate to the idea of having more money, creating more money in your life. So that was a big part of it. Um, and really The reality of it is when I first started my network marketing career, my husband was involved with me. It was a mutual decision that we had made being in the airline industry, going through bankruptcies uh, and having the issues of job security and the fear of losing a job. What would we do? He's been a pilot forever. Could he get hired somewhere else? I mean, we really knew that we were very, very dependent on the employer situation. You may be able to relate to that exact same thing. And it's kind of interesting, especially in the airline industry, which will never change. It will never change. It will always be a very turbulent industry, pun intended. It's purely based on economics. It's based on uh, feuding in the world, fuel prices, so many different things that determine the path of that particular industry. You may be in an industry that's like that too. I don't know, but many, many of them are. Real estate is is tied to certain things. I mean, obviously, real estate's one of those things that's always going to keep happening. People are going to move, get transferred, buy and sell homes. I mean, that's still going to go on, but a lot of it's tied to economics in terms of timeframes when there's up times and timeframes when there's down times. And that's it with most professions, most industries, but for us... That was the situation. So when we first started in network marketing, we worked it together. And the reality of it is what I really wanted more than anything, because if you've listened to my story, you know that I had a very negative MLM blueprint. I was fascinated by the circles. I'm really dating myself. I was fascinated by the concept of you get a few, who get a few, who get a few, and what all of that could ultimately create in terms of income and lifestyle and freedom and all of that. But I also uh, realized um, that I didn't want to do it. I did not want to have to step outside my comfort zone, get outside my ego and all those different things and talk to people. And my husband at the time was super gung-ho ho about it. So he did in the beginning, a lot of the heavy lifting. He made his list. He did the things that were supposed to be done. Very pilot oriented, right? You know, uh, very analytical. It's like, if this is what has to be done, we just do it, blah, blah, blah. So the reality of it is I wanted to kind of be his arm piece. I wanted to be the adoring wife that walked across stage with the big check and the top income earner um, as his partner, but I didn't really want to have to be the one to do it. And then something terrible happened. About three years into our business, he came home from a trip with the airline industry and said, I got to tell you, I don't want to build a network marketing business anymore. I don't want to personally do it. I totally support you 100%. I will be there for you and your biggest cheerleader back you up, but I just don't want to do it. I feel like I'm getting off one airplane for American Airlines, getting on another airplane for our business. I'm running around. I'm never home. I don't see the kids. And I just, it's not my gig. It's just not my gig. Well, I have to tell you, I was a little devastated because that meant that it wasn't going to be my gig either. That meant that I wasn't going to be able to walk across stage as a top income earner, 
all the different things that I had envisioned for myself because he was going to have to be the one. He was the one who was going to do all that, not me, right? Well, so I had some decisions to make. That was a very uh, pivotal moment for me in my network marketing career. And I was fortunate that I had an upline mentor role model, um, Meg, who basically uh, said, you can do this. You can do this. I believe in you. You don't need him to do it. You can do this. You just have to dig down and find it within yourself to do it. And I'd love to tell you that that got me off to a fast start, that I kept going, that I did all those things that I needed to do. But the reality of it is I still struggled and stumbled for a bit, but I did make a decision. I made a commitment that I was going to see the job through. I was going to get it done. I didn't know how, I didn't know when, but I was going to get it done because I had made a commitment to myself, but more importantly, I had made a commitment to my children. I had made a commitment to my children to be there with them no matter what, to keep them out of daycare. And ultimately over time, all I really had to do was look into the eyes of my children and be reminded of what my why was. I could let myself down. I could let myself off the hook potentially, but I was not going to let my children down in any way, shape or form. So I struggled, but I had made that commitment. And I have to tell you, I wanted to quit a thousand times. I would go into my closet. I had a walk-in closet, still do, but I had one. That was the first time I'd had a walk-in closet back then in Phoenix, early uh, in the mid nineties, mid and late nineties. And I would lay on the floor and kick and scream and yell, why am I doing this to myself? What's wrong with me? When am I going to figure this out? You may be able to relate to that too. So all that to say, um, in 1999, by night, by the time 1999 came along, I had a lot going on. I had a growing business, but I had way exhausted my warm market. I had, uh, gotten sick of networking meetings and all the rest of it. And I was looking for a solution. And that's when the internet came into my life. My biggest fear then was Y2K. I've talked about that. But I know that uh, when, when I discovered the internet, I just knew that I had figured out, I had found what was going to be my solution. Okay. So my why was really strong. And because of my why, because I was committed to not quitting, to being there for my children, for you know, doing all of the things that I needed to do to move that business forward. Because I was so focused on my why, the how showed up. And that is why why is so important. And that's what Simon Sinek talks about in his book, Start With Why. When the why is strong enough, the how will show up. The how will show up every single time. And it certainly has for me in many, many ways, because even when I took my business online, that solved a lot of challenges for me. I took my business online in October of 1999. And within the first month of doing business online, I sponsored my first person. And that solidified my belief from that point forward. I knew without a shadow of a doubt that I could do this, that I could be successful, that the internet was the key, that I could put myself out there And I could become the hunted and not the hunter because I had proven it. That person came to me and that's really all I needed to uh, benefit from that. All right. So uh, that was how things went. And if you know my story, you know that that did change everything. It catapulted me to top income earner within my company, over 75% of the company in my downline. I've sold products and services in over 40 countries without leaving my home on and on and on and on and on. All of that is there. It's proven and it definitely worked. But what happened is along about 2009, I think it was, I went to, but by this time, 2009 came along. My daughter was five, was 14. My son was 17 and I had done it. Like I had hit all, I had basically checked off the boxes that I really wanted, secured our retirement, you know, just a lot of different things like that. And my children never did have to go to daycare. I had checked that box, but they were old enough now. And that's when I kind of lost my wife. I went to a direct selling women's association event, the DSWA. I went to an event down in Temecula, California, and I remember part of the workshop, it was just a, it was a small group workshop for leaders in network marketing. There were probably 20 or 30 of us in the room and Nikki Kiahoho, I never can say her name exactly right from Hawaii, 
who's one of the founders along with her daughter, she was doing this workshop. And one of the questions was write down your why. And I stared at the piece of paper and I looked at the piece of paper and I thought, oh, well, you know, to be home with my kids, not to ever have them be in daycare. Hmm. That didn't stir up anything within me, like nothing, because it was done. It was accomplished. Even if I had to go back to work, my kids wouldn't have had to have gone to daycare. They were old enough, right? And I sat there really struggling to come up with what was my compelling why. Now, the interesting thing was my business wasn't struggling so much, but my own personal growth within the business was. Some of my personal recruiting, sponsoring, my enthusiasm, showing up the way that I really needed to show up or wanted to show up for my team and new new team partners and on the internet and as a leader, a lot of that was really starting to waver. And I didn't know why. I didn't know what was going on. In fact, in some ways, I wasn't even fully conscious or aware of it. I just know that it was happening. So that was an earth shattering moment for me. I I remember sitting there and if you've ever had one of those situations where you almost feel like you're having an out of body experience, like the room kind of went dark and I could, all I could see was the piece of paper in front of me that was blank. uh, And I just had no idea where to go with that. And the reality of it is I ultimately shortly after that ended up leaving that company for a number of reasons. It essentially failed, not completely, but it's nothing like it used to be. And I saw the handwriting on the wall and that probably had something to do with my lack of a why and lack of a motivation. But ultimately I realized I didn't have anything significant that I was working for because the, we it's not the money. The money's great. And in the beginning, we think that's what we're working for, but it's what the money creates for us ultimately. And I had achieved what I wanted with that. So I didn't have anything compelling that was getting me out of bed day to day and making me show up and do the things that I needed and wanted to do to move myself forward. I'd love to tell you that right after that, kind of like I'd love to tell you that I was a fast starter when I found the internet, when I did all these different things, I'm starting to think I'm Leo, the late bloomer in a lot of different ways, with the exception of the internet. I was a pioneer with the internet, but I struggled with that for a long time. I had a lot of anger, resentment, bitterness over leaving that company, different things that happened with the management and the owners, uh, and just feeling like I wasn't treated well when I was trying to be upfront and have integrity. That's a whole nother story. And I've grown a lot and hopefully they've grown a lot and it's just water under the bridge. And as you know, my mantra is, Everything that's happening to me is happening for me. So I always try to find a silver lining, and there certainly is. But I floundered for a number of years. I had success with my next company. I got to the second to the top level, was a top income earner, uh, was top recruiter, top leader. I I, I won all the awards there just about two, which was great. Um on the one hand, but on the other hand, I still had never truly found my compelling why. And part of it was because honestly, I was harboring a lot of old resentment and anger and bitterness within me toward the company I had left. And you've probably heard it before, like hanging on to anger and bitterness is like drinking poison, waiting for somebody else to die. And that really is true when you think about it. Uh, A lot of what I teach and coach on is mindset and accepting what is and resolving not to argue with the past or the present, but to step up and shake it off or shake it off and step up, however you want to say it, and keep moving forward. Find the lesson, the silver lining in all of it, and figure out how that's going to move you forward to the next place that you ultimately desire to be. And so that's what I had to do. I had to uh, make a decision to move forward and to come up with what that was going to be. Well, it's interesting. In the end of 2016, I moved back to Arizona from California, and I thought that that was going to be a whole new chapter for me. I kind of hit the ground running going to networking meetings. I had lived in Southern California for 15 years, which in, in for 12 of those, I lived in a very small, 13 of those, I lived in a very small mountain community where the drive to go to any networking any real events was a 40 to 40 minute to an hour drive, often in snow and sleet and rain and fog and down a mountain and a lot of things that really didn't lend themselves well to being a mom of two small children and with an airline pilot husband. And even as they got older, I just was never comfortable really leaving at certain times. It was, and it was such a big commitment. So 
Um, then when I moved off that mountain to out to Ventura, California, the traffic in Southern California is just atrocious. If you live there, you know what I mean. And if you've been there, you know what I mean. And if you've heard about it, it's all true. So negotiating the highways and byways to get to networking events really was not a great option for me. So when I got back to Arizona, it was like, perfect. I lived in Phoenix for 13 years. It's laid out in a grid and people complain about traffic here, but they have no idea what traffic really is. I laugh, uh, but it was very negotiable for me. So I hit the ground running, going to networking events and thought I'm going to really get out there. I'm going to combine the best of the offline and the online world and really take my business to the next level. And I did a lot and I had a lot of success but I didn't, still didn't reach exactly what it was I was looking for. And the biggest reason was I still did not have a strong, compelling why. I didn't have the three C's that I talk about, clarity, commitment, and consistency. The biggest thing is I was lacking clarity. Who am I? Who am I as a business person? I didn't even know how to describe myself anymore. Was I a social media strategist, a social media trainer or coach? Was I a network marketer? Was I building a network marketing business? Was I a network marketing coach? I was coaching real estate agents. Was I a, a real estate trainer and coach? And I know from the time that I've spent, I'm over 21 years now online. So for the last 16, 17, 17 or 18 years, when I got back here, I know that in order to really be successful online, there are some things that you have to have into place from a niche or niche perspective uh, so that people can find you, whether it's hashtags, keyword searches, you know, the search terms, the content that you're putting out there, you have to be strategic so that your right audience finds you. It, I've say, I say this all the time. It's not about spray and pray and hope that you'll be successful. You've got to be strategic with all of that in order to have the success that you really desire. And so I was all over the place. I was fumbling. Uh, my husband couldn't tell people what I did. My children couldn't, you know, clearly say what their mom does. My family, my parents, my brother, nobody could. And the reality of it is I couldn't either. And so I was still really lacking that, that why. In two, the, 2018, I joined a coaching program, which is why I'm such a big proponent of coaching. If you're struggling, don't get a coach, right? That's why you're here. Get a coach because your coach can see the blind spots. They can help you through all that. They can hold a mirror up to you that says, this is where your blind spot is. This is where you're struggling. This is where your thinking is off. This, these are the things that you really want to work on. So I joined a coaching program. And from that, I built a mastermind group, a small mastermind group that I'm still part of today that really helped me come back around to who it is that I want to be, who it is that I want to serve and how I want to serve them. And once that became clear for me, everything opened up. Now, interestingly, uh, I started working on building out the Street Smart Wealth Academy. I went back to doing one-to-one -one coaching with my network marketing clients. I went back to being very focused on network marketers as my primary niche. Why? Because I know it like the back of my hand. There's not anything I haven't struggled with. There's not anything I haven't overcome. The one thing I've not ever really done with network marketing is build it as a single mom. That's the one thing I always say. Now, I felt like it sometimes because my husband was gone half the month, but in terms of truly being a single mom, that's the one area that I haven't done it in, but I built it as a mom. And I feel like with mindset and mindset mastery, I can coach anybody through that process. So, um, in 2018, everything started really gelling for me and my clarity became became the big part of it, the 3C. Without that clarity, I was fumbling and you may be feeling that way too. So I have to say, what is your big driving why? The why is so important. We don't have to have a why necessarily to show up to a job. We do, but it's in the background. We've got bills to pay. We need to make money. We need to put food on the table, all of that. And of course, that's a, that's a why. But we don't even think about it. We just know that that's what we have to do to collect that paycheck. So we show up. We do our best to put our happy face on, in many cases, and do what needs to be done. So uh, when you're in a volunteer business, such as network marketing, and the cost to buy in, in terms of financial, is pretty low, 
there's really not a lot of skin in the game, right? There's not a lot of skin in the game. And most of us would acknowledge that not a lot of skin in the game. So it's really important that we have that compelling why, because something has to get you out of bed in the morning. Something has to get you past the procrastination that all of us run into and get you into forward motion. Now, procrastination is not going to go away, even when you have that strong, compelling why. I struggle with procrastination probably three times a day for the most part. Uh, on Monday, I was struggling with it, something terrible. I, I just was feeling the ick of what's going on in the world today. And I had committed to doing Facebook Live and my Street Smart Well School Facebook group. I wanted to do some things on Instagram. And I just was coming up with every reason not to. And finally, I just kind of grabbed myself by the, by the collar um, subconsciously and said, just do it do it raw, do it authentic, and just be honest. And I was. If you're in Street Smart Well School on Facebook, you'll see my video where I said, I've been fighting doing this. My whole goal was to talk about how to use that focus word to build on it for action and accountability in your business. And I did it. And I felt so much better after I did it. And it got me in forward motion for doing other things. That's the thing with procrastination when we just can push ourselves through, so often we take ourselves to the next place that we need to be to get done what it is that we need to get done. So recently I was on a call with one of my coaching clients and that's what came up. There was a lot of frustration, procrastination. Um, She had committed to doing this, this, and this, and it had been like a three-week process where none of it was getting done. And I finally just had to say, what is going on? What is going on? I don't know. I'm just procrastinating. I can't really tell you. And so I came back around to what's your why? And there was a long dead pause. What's your why? And I immediately flashed back to 2009, sitting in that hotel room, surrounded by 20 to 30 other people as probably the top income earner in that group and not being able to clearly state what my why was. And that's when I realized I'd lost it. And so, of course, that was my homework to her. You've got to go back to basics. You've got to go back to finding that compelling why, because when you have the strong, compelling why, the how will show up. I was done with with my warm market, you know, in 1999, almost six years into building my business. I was done with running around to coffee shop meetings, running ads, going to networking events. I was done with that but I wasn't done with my desire to build my network marketing business, to be a top income earner and all of that. So I had to stay very committed to my why and being in action and committed to my mindset around that. And that's when the how showed up. That's when the internet marketing seminar, the little ad in the paper advertising the internet marketing seminar showed up. And that's when I went kicking and screaming. It was a beautiful October Saturday in Phoenix. And if you've ever been here in October, or if you live here now, you know that that's when we finally start cooling down. My husband was home, the family, the kids, the pool was beckoning. Last thing I wanted to do on a Saturday afternoon was drive up to Scottsdale and sit in a hotel room. But it's the best two hours I ever spent in terms of my business. It changed everything for me. And I caught a vision and I knew like nothing else. But here's the thing. I was committed to my why. I had clarity on what I wanted to accomplish. I didn't have clarity on the how though. I had clarity on what I wanted to accomplish. I was committed to it. And I was consistent with being out there trying to find the how. And the how showed up for me. So what are you committed to? What's your why? And is that why compelling enough to get you out of bed, into action, and doing those things that you need to do? That's the question that I have for you. And so I want you to spend some time this week really thinking about that. Spend some time weighing in on that and what those goals are that you want to achieve and what's currently got you feeling stuck in your business. And is it possible that your why or potentially lack of a better why is what's holding you back? When you're in a volunteer business, it's very important that you have a why because that's what gets you going, 
You have to become your own best boss. You have all the time in the world stretching out before you and no one there to make you actually take the action. So remember, the why will always create the how. And when you have that clear, the people, the opportunities show up and you will take inspired action. So one of the things that I like to say is that, you know, in network marketing, it's about planting seeds that grow into trees that create shade for people we will never, ever know. That's the beauty of it. And when you have a compelling why, you know that that's going to happen every single time. Every single time. So I got my why back and I'm super excited about it. And as I've shared, I have some big goals to go along with my big why this year. This year, my plan is to create connection, community, and success stories within the academy and with my strategic partners. I'm taking on a limited number of strategic affiliate partners to work with me in the Street Smart Wealth Academy to promote it and get paid very well for it. So my goal is to show up and serve, giving it my best each day, every day, and always showing my authentic self. And I'm excited that over 700 people will come through the Academy this year being transformed and families transforming. Again, we're planting those seeds that grow into those trees. And I am super excited about what all of that means. So I would love to hear your why, your big goals, and let's get out there and rock it. And remember this, until next time, hesitation never cashed a check. Good luck to you in your business. And head over to firststatemagic.com and grab that new training platform. If you would like even more tips and training, I have a free gift for you over at streetsmartwealth.me. It's my guide, Unleash the Power of Social Selling. If you're ready to stop struggling in your business and develop a sales and social media strategy to attract your ideal clients, team partners, and create the success you dream about, grab the guide right now over at streetsmartwealth.me. You'll find more on my blog at streetsmartwealth.com as well as my Facebook group, streetsmartwealthschool.com, and follow me on Instagram, at Jackie Almer. And make sure you learn more about the Street Smart Wealth Academy over at streetsmartwealthacademy.com. I'll see you on the next show.